what a joy to be an integral part of this 23rd Qatar Indian Management Association's Founders Day celebration. Dr. Nizar Kocheri, Mr. Salim Abdul Karim, distinguished guests, dear friends, and ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege. It's my privilege to be an integral part of this management association. And the subject which they have given to me is something which is very exciting. And it's very apt in this defining moment. We live in a changing world, extraordinary set of changes and challenges are happening. How do we manage as management executives? As a practitioner of a financial service globally, I will share my experience managing the adversaries to your advantage. How do we plan? How do we organize? How do we set a vision and mission? How do we ensure the values are coming in track? How do we ensure the drive and determination comes from the leadership? How do we make sure we give a balanced growth, as we call it, a sustainable value creation? That's important. When you run up an enterprise, your shareholders, your customers, you have regulators, your society at large, you have your human capital. You have to make sure all are in balance. It's not look safe. That's what is management is all about. It's not a matter of pressing a button, pulling a lever, scanning profit and loss account, shouting this and that. It has to do with creating the happiness. And that's what the value creation of corporate management is all about. That's what I have experienced in my pursuit of wisdom or experience. When you have a clear clarity in terms of goals, vision setting, goal setting, aiming at long term, that's goal congruence for you. Aim at short term, you cultivate trees. If you aim at medium term, you cultivate nothing but extension of branches. But when you want to build humanity, you have to look at eternity. The values should have a social risk management as an integral part of it. You have to keep human capital in mind. There are pillars of enterprise strength and character. We have to necessarily recognize they play a big role, substantive role in value creation. So human capital matters. Investment returns you have to produce for shareholders. And managing the business is mean, means managing the risk as well. Your market risk, your credit risk, your operation risk, your cyber risk with a digital advantage and the risk integration in substance to make sure your business and risk are aligned without a gap. The alignment is vital for us to see through. Like an economy, fiscal and monetary has to align. The monetary policy comes from the technocrats, regulators, central banks. The fiscal comes from the politicians, the government, elected representatives. So essentially, fiscal and monetary has to align to have a stability for the country. When it comes to value creation for the world at large, you have to eliminate poverty, you have to bring in food security, you have to bring in universal education, healthcare, global warming and climate change. You need to fix it. We live in a planet which is much more futuristic and our children and grandchildren are safe. So countries level, continent level, planet level, it's not different from corporate level or individual, you as a person. You have a drive, you have a determination, you have adaptability. That's what we learn out of these crises. Ability to articulate solutions irrespective of the contingencies, come out with embracing the change and ensuring you have values which are second to none. Let me share as a practitioner 
my experience on all these adversaries. For example, 2008 was a financial crisis. I said this in the financial media. It was designed to deceive the common man. The investment banks were creating toxic products. The rich was becoming richer, poor was becoming poorer. Globalization has got huge value advantage, but it has created more gaps between the haves and have nots. That's economics. It, investment banks were selling toxic products in the form of debt securities, loan papers. When the market is getting inflated, the inflated price you take, an underlying security is nothing but the real estate which is five times or 10 times more, when the market collapses, real estate market collapse, you have underlying collateral is not even covering the lending, the debt paper. That's what exactly happened. To fix this, G7 has become G8, G8 has become G20. It's not a financial crisis, it became human crisis. Policy decision to increase the capital, ensuring you have a regulatory realignment, deregulation, to re-regulations, to making, making sure you improve the liquidity. What started as a liquidity crisis moved into funding crisis, funding becomes solvency and sovereign issues. World over, the crisis was visibly shaking and governments of printed money, administered the currency, ensuring you have money supply everywhere in, from deflation to you have to in, inflate. After 1930 depression, we had this crisis. When I was called to present in various financial media forum, I must have attended at least 100 interviews during that year, BBC, Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox News, name it, or Qatar TV, Al Jazeera. Financial media was taking economic commentaries. And I was telling one thing, this crisis is an opportunity. I went on to say in the United Nations, this crisis is an opportunity in front of the Secretary General of the United Nations and the Central Bank Governor who was in the panel along with me. It was a contrary view. How can I say this is an opportunity? It is an opportunity to bring in more ethical and moral governance. That's why re-regulation, universal values in terms of accounting, valuation, securitization are all enforced as a matter of discipline. As we say, as an individual, either you have discipline or regret. Discipline is happiness. You cannot do sins. Wealth without work. Knowledge without character. Commerce without morality. Science without humanity. Politics without principles. Religion without sacrifice. These are all sins. That's what exactly we have to map it when it comes to corporate crimes. It was a human crisis. So to bring in sustainable value creations, you need to take policy decisions to make sure you bring the financial stability, financial stability board was brought in. And I proved when I was asked to explain in, in the form of research content, which was acknowledged and recognized as a PhD material. Later, I was given a doctorate in the European University of Geneva. All my interviews were testimonies. Very independently, it was measured. And I was given the recognition in Switzerland in 2012. That was one example. The second example was Qatar was, it is Qatar specific, I should say, when Qatar was put into blockade on June 5th, 2017. We moved from plan A to plan B. We reinforced the self-reliance. We used to import from Jebel Ali. Transshipment used to come from Jebel Ali. Now we have our own port, September 2017. New port, Mina port was commissioned. Look at the traffic today. We imported food. We imported cows. We created our own dairy production. al Malagna. So you have reasons to believe. You never know what you can do unless you think about mapping these adversaries into opportunities. The positive thinking, 
visibly looking at the positive sides of the coin, ensuring we reduce the negativity. We bring the self-esteem to self-reliance and self-respect in substance of humanity. That's what matters when it comes to you because your thought has to be auto-positive, converting the negative into positive. Isn't it? That's what Andrew Carnegie did, looking at the positive sides of the coin, and he potentially he was a very successful businessman. So you have to rely on adaptability. Because discovery, we have learned, is adaptability. Human beings can alter their attitude, then the entire altitude changes in terms of performance. That's what we learn. Either you have discipline or you regret. And that's what financial stability is all about. When the blockade came, the same story holds good. We moved. There were run on the banks, there were money supply going out, but Qatar's financial stability was second to none. I was cutting across the globe and ensuring that Qatar financial stability is showcased in terms of economic fundamentals, right from Australia to America to United Nations. Enterprise-wise, there were challenges. When you have cross-border exposure, like financial institutions, like what I managed in the past, we had to make sure our risks are measured, managed, and you keep a risk-weighted capital allocation for this. The third one, which we have seen, the whole world has seen, it's not financial crisis, it's not blockade, it is a world at large. When it cropped up, how do we manage the human tra tragedy and human risk management, economic risk management, and governance, social risk management, and governance, environment risk management, and governance. While you have healthcare was a major focus, compassionate governance. That's what countries like India did. Many countries around the world were hugging each other to make sure, irrespective of the political ideologies, they came together to build a humanity, rebuild the humanity, I should say. Millions of people were lost from this planet. What is important is to recognize that we have to build with oneness, with single commitment, building humanity, with futuristic option. That's why, you know, environmental social governance become major thrust in terms of the overall matters. So ESG is the prime norms. It's not how you make, how much you make, how exactly you are making this money, earning this money, rather. That's value-driven. That is purposeful. Human endeavors are for a purpose. Our purpose of life is to recognize this opportunity as a human being and ensure we create a better society for the futuristic option. We build a better society. Not only we create a better world, better citizenship in this world tomorrow, day after. And that's what exactly we managed to articulate solutions. What we did? We supplemented additional liquidity. We learned from the financial crisis and we managed to convert the, the, the challenges into opportunities. We promoted small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. We reduced the income inequality, the supplementing additional advantage in terms of the support for healthcare and digitization. Everything became virtual and the world has created huge opportunity out of this virtual reality. Embracing the changing face of the world is comes with a digital advantage. Five-fold corporate management principles I spelled out, and it was the new norm. One is restructuring of your debt. If you're a small and medium-sized entrepreneur, go and change your debt position. Debt servicing should be eased. eased. Go to a banker and talk to them and ensure that you have support. Governments have re-stipulated the norms. They gave the concessional advantage. They waived the duties. So you have to restructure your business. The debt first to start with. The remedial management. Wherever there is recovery is required, you have to work on it to make sure that you, again, restructure it. The liquidity risk is real. 
around the wall, the lines were cut off for borrowings. And again, we have to find solutions with the family silver. That's what the remedial management is all about, rationalization, ensuring you, you cut the cost, fixed cost, variable cost, monitoring the consumptions, ensuring you have a policy framework to have cost efficiency. Rationalize it as much as possible. Indispensable approach to rationalization. Making sure that your revenues are enhanced. Next one. What are the various sources of revenues you have? How can we create alternate revenues? How do we collaborate? If we cannot do it ourselves on a zero base, how do we make sure we have a shared vision, shared leadership, our institutions can come together, make them more formidable in size and substance? Corporate management is all about recognizing this and ensuring you have accountability in prospects. The governance becomes more scientific. Ensuring you map the risk, potentially fix these maps into policy frameworks, whether you run a corporate or a country, doesn't matter. That's the five R, remedial management, researching of your debt, rationalization, revenue enhancement, and remodeling with the digital advantage. Everything has become digital. Nobody is location-centric. They are information-centric. They are not product-centric. They are consumer-centric. E-commerce becomes the new world, and you have inventions and reinventions coming in multiple form and substance. And that's what the converting the adversaries into a, to your advantage is all about. So the result is you will have a value creation which is sustainable, measurable, manageable, controllable. And that's what a good institution should do. So opportunities are there in every single day. Life itself is an opportunity. When you wake up, you have a fresh perspective because you're born today. You were in transition yesterday night. You're born. Nothing is permanent when you recognize and you become more compassionate. You understand the humanity in, in, with a deep dive. Understanding love will sustain the meritocracy. Being considerate to the unfortunate. And that is part of the corporate principle. It's not a charity per se. Corporate management is all about recognizing each other's problems and ensuring we shoulder each other. That's a team play. No individual achieves anything. A team performs. The drive comes from the team leadership, the positive energy as a team. When you inculcate, it becomes more productive, positive, constructive, and your engagement becomes more scientific and you become a good executive. And that's what management lessons you have to learn. I once again thank the organizers for the invitation to me. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be physically be there on a specific date. And I am sure the conference will go well and all India management institution is known for its value creations and Qatar All India Management Association has been very productive and positive. I have participated in this endeavor time and again. I look forward to see you all very soon. Thank you once again. Wish you all success in your conference. Thank you, Nancy Jackman.